Hello everyone, welcome along to another video here on the channel. I'm Ash, you'll know me as Brommer18. Today we're covering another tactic. This is a series where I show you how to recreate real systems in FIFA 22. Now it's not a promise that they will, that you'll win every game, but it is a promise that they'll be recreated as accurately and as effectively as I possibly can within the constraints of the game. Now, I put a vote out on my Patreon recently with regards to who they want to see me cover next, which tactic they would like to see next on the channel, and uh, Eddie Howe's Newcastle was a resounding clear winner. Now, if you haven't already subscribed to the Patreon and given me uh, a follow on there, then please do go and have a look at that. The link is down below. You can get access to a whole range of fantastic perks, including my uh, custom scouting package, which is where we have detailed scout reports on a range of different players based on hundreds of hours of my own analysis. Lots of work and effort gone into that. I think you guys will really enjoy it. Um, also, get access to exclusive tactics videos that I haven't covered on the channel such as Sean Dyche's Burnley, uh, while well, we got Marco Silva's Fulham, uh, Thiago Motta Spezia, a whole lot more to come there as well. Also my custom tactics package, which is where I give you deep dives and rankings and ratings on every tactic that I do cover on the channel. And there's a whole range of other perks as well, behind the scenes videos, early access, all that good stuff. So go and check that out if you haven't done so already. With that being said, it's time to get into it. So, what do we have? Well, I'm going to label this as a 4141. So I'm going to show you how that's recreated. But what we've also got is a 4231, uh, which is a different game plan. And I'm going to show you how it changes to that depending on whether Joel Linton is playing or whether uh, Bruno Guimaraes is playing. So, first off, with the 4141, that's with someone more like Joel Linton in the team. So there's a couple of different variants. They've also played a five back at times, but not enough for me to really sink my teeth into. So I think this sort of 4141 is generally what we're going to go for. So first things first, in terms of the position changes, um, we have these guys um, generally set in the 4141, other than Joel Linton, who has been changed to a centre attacking midfielder which is going to help you to get him in and around Chris Wood as the lone striker a bit more. Particularly when you do go long to Wood occasionally, it's good to have someone like Joel Linton around to play off him. What it also means compared to someone like Joe Willock, um, he is more someone who's going to support the team in the build-up play, in the deeper areas, whereas Joel Linton sort of takes a backward step in that and looks to support the forward players a little bit more but we'll still obviously trap back and do a lot of the dirty work um in certain moments and quite often throughout the game whereas obviously as i say with willock he's playing more of that true box to box kind of role i guess you could say um also with the wingers the reason it's more of a 4141 as opposed to like you know 433 etc anything like that is because um what i notice is the, the wingers the likes of fraser some maximan rather than often getting in behind and penetrating the back line they like to pick the ball up deeper and drive with the ball and run at the opposition and so as a result you get a more defective effective uh, degree of that when they are at wide midfield as opposed to right and left wing other than that though you are pretty good to go in the formation so let's talk about the tactics then. Well, defensive style, we've got press after possession loss. And they do a really good job of counter-pressing the opposition. They work really hard off the ball. And this plays um, into that. What you'll find is often when they do lose a the ball, they're looking to regain it, quite, regain it quite quickly. But then when they don't win possession back, fairly quickly then they're looking to regain their shape and then we'll form that mid block which we'll come on to very very shortly the defensive width is 28 it's going to give you a nice compact shape and stop the opposition playing through you try and force them out wide really crowd those central areas out make it much harder for them to attack you and then the depth as we've just spoken about the block is a nice mid block so we've got it on 60 here and it's going to give you that sort of balanced outlook because you're still able to um, effectively employ a kind of counter press but then you can still leave yourself slightly more protection um, with regards to when the opposition are on the attack for example with the likes of in this case dan burn fabian shah at center back these guys are quite slow so you don't really want to be playing a high line a mid block is more suited to them and so as a result they get the best balance by playing that uh, offensively then what do we have so i sort of messed about with this one we have a mixture of balanced and slow build up because you know they do like to try and play through the thirds and anyhow is quite you know big on that that's part of his philosophy but you know they're a very tall team 
They're, they're very good wing going direct, particularly with the likes of Chris Wood. Even St. Maxwell, they can play long counter-attacking balls into him, Joel Linton, etc. They do a bit of both. But what I found is on balanced, you don't get enough emphasis on slow build. If you don't get players showing for the ball deep on goal kicks, for example, and goalkeeper restarts. Um, so what we have is slow build up and then you can still look to go long to players if and when you need to even on slow build up I've spoke about this before in other videos it doesn't limit you into constantly trying to play through the thirds you can occasionally go a bit longer if and when you need to so it does really give you the best balanced um, and sort of variety in that regard the chance creation is on forward runs lots of players looking to utilize as much space as possible particularly helps you again talking about that sort of variety and that balance because it also enables you not only to try and play through the thirds be more possession orientated but also counter attack hit teams with lots of movement and lots of penetration particularly from the likes of the central players i noticed these guys were very very important to the way they attacked even more so perhaps than the wingers because of how much how their high volume of runs getting into the box often causing an option um, to be a real danger to the opposition by running in behind etc so with forward runs you get more of that and it's really really important the width is up to 70 and this gives you a wide shape lots of players particularly the fullbacks always looking to overlap which we'll talk about in the instructions the wingers naturally um, always looking to get out wide and really attack the opposition in the, where the space is and that is out wide and because of the fact that they've got a lot of players crammed in the central areas particularly in this formation um, you'll find that obviously naturally the opposition are going to try and compensate for that try and come a bit bit more be more compact come a bit narrow and so you'll find more spaces out wide and this is why they can really get a lot of joy by playing you know with a wider shape players in the box is up to seven this is going to give you roughly three to four and this is very important as well because i found it was roughly between three and four players obviously they'd have wood in there as a striker the two central midfielders if it's willock and joel linton getting in there as well acting um as another sort of figure really to cross the ball into and they may be one of the wingers usually some maximum rarely would someone like ryan fraser um get into the box you also had jacob murphy in there as well um, sort of in and around there sometimes in the lineup. Corners and free kicks, both of these are up to four, going to give you a nice amount of players to uh, cross the ball into. I didn't really notice anything special that they did in that regard with regards to less or more players being in the box. So we go with a nice four and it gives you a good balance. Right then, so onto the instructions, starting off with the Bravka in goal. We've got him and comes to crosses and he's going to make sure that he's coming out, relieving that pressure off you in those crossing situations really really handy um in this game in particular because goalkeepers are just you know quite overpowered saving outside the boxes on balance though didn't really notice him too much storming out of his goal ridiculously again with a mid block as well there is sort of less demand for it uh, but obviously you can just manually do things with the Y or triangle button if and when you need to. The two centre-backs are exactly the same and there are no changes there so you don't need to change them um, notice a little bit of change when they did play the five back if you do want to try and implement that um, occasionally one of them would try and sort of get forward a little bit more try and support the attack um, but in the four back absolutely fine the two full backs are also on the same instructions as well they're on join the attack and also overlap in this case we've got matt targets and javier manquillo they've often played craft out at right back as well but manquillo's i guess slightly more suited to it in that sort of more attacking fullback role. Didn't need to push these all the way up to wing back this time, um, as we've done so in a lot of other videos. We've kept these guys at fullback to try and make sure um, that they are still going to be a little bit more narrow compared to that wing back role where they really do get out onto the touchline as often as possible. Into the midfield, we've got John Joe Shelby. He plays the role of that deep line playmaker in this regard, um, where he'll be staying back and he's looking to screen the back four. Also not looking to venture forward too much. Defensive behaviour is cut passing lanes. You know, again, man mark doesn't really work on this game anyway. But obviously, as just a, that sort of single pivot and that single defensive midfielder, he might need to do that anyway in order to compensate in case the opposition have a numerical advantage in those central areas, particularly on counter-attacks. His defensive position is cover centre as he looks to make sure, as that sole defensive midfielder, that they can't play through him, particularly again on the counter-attack. But the positioning freedom is free roam. And why this is very important, because it's going to mean he's going to drift from side to side, particularly when you have the ball in your own half. That 
that's going to really help you try and play out from the back if and when you need to. He's also going to help you to recycle possession with that free roam positioning freedom as well. So that's very, very important. Next, onto Joe Willock, who is again that central midfielder. It's also important to note that he should be a right central midfielder in this um, formation. I did forget to mention that, so apologies. You want him as a, an RCM as opposed to just a central midfielder. So we've got him on get forward, um, and this means that he's going to often try and penetrate the back line, make runs in beyond Chris Wood. Very, very good at doing that. We've seen him score goals as well. The most recent one I can remember is, is one against Brentford, where he looks to, to run in behind. And that's what he's very, very good at. And similarly, getting to the box of crosses as well. Again, I spoke about earlier with, with who gets into the box in those crossing situations. Definitely Joe Willock and Joel Linton are part of that. Positioning freedom is stick to position and his defensive position is also on cover wing. He's the one who's going to be getting dragged out if and when he needs to. But with those two players on that side on each flank, you shouldn't really need to see him getting dragged out all that much. So what about Joel Linton then? Been a very contentious um, sort of talking point in the Patreon Discord with uh, some of uh, my wonderful Patreons who are also Newcastle fans. Um, you know, really enjoyed scouting him, got to say, uh, and can certainly see the value that, that he does have in this team, particularly in this um, system and in this position. So we've got him on comeback on defence, works very, very hard, tracks back, um, and that's very, very important. He's also got a high, high work rate on this game, which really nicely plays into that. And support on crosses is getting to the box for the cross as well. Um, and again, to make sure that with him um, basically acting as that kind of second striker, just supporting Chris Wood as much as possible, but he's found a lot more freedom in those crossing situations because obviously... Chris Wood is, is really the centre of attention and he's the one sort of often being double marked. So as a result, sometimes Joel Linton finds a little bit more space and as a result, you can you know, really find a bit of joy getting him into those crossing situations as well. In terms of the wingers, so Max Mann and Fraser have slightly different roles because of their play styles. Now, Fraser is someone who obviously likes to get the ball in space out wide, likes to put a lot of deliveries into the box isolate players in the wide areas and that's where he excels at so as a result he's going to stay wide in his chance creation whereas with St Maximan he's on cut inside and as a result what you'll find is as we've seen many times St Maximan when he gets a ball he's always looking to drive inside take players on get it onto his right foot um, and really just look to drive up players in the central areas more coming out from the wide areas and that's really really important both of them are on comeback on defence to make sure they're tracking back. Again, with them at wide midfield as opposed to wingers, this helps in that regard as well. So it's very, very important. And then the support runs are on balanced for both of them. And this is something we alluded to earlier if, with regards to um, them picking up the ball from deeper and often looking to drive at players. Now, again, it's on balance rather than come short because occasionally you'll see them looking to penetrate, more so St. Maximan than Ryan Fraser, who looks to utilise that just deadly pace. Um, you know, he's often looking to, sometimes looking to get in behind and penetrate the back line, but um, not always. So as a result, with balance, you get a bit of variety in between them. Finally, support on crosses. So Maxman is on balance as he'll occasionally look to support those crossing situations. But with Fraser, he's more on stay on the edge of the box. He's often the one who's also delivering the balls as well, as opposed to being on the receiving end. And at five foot four, probably not going to be the biggest threat um, in those crossing situations anyway. Finally, with Chris Wood, we've got him on stay central. And he's going to be the focal point of the attack. And that plays into the role of the target man as well as they're looking to play off him. Now, a little bit frustrating with this role as... It does mean he doesn't attack crosses as much, um, but in terms of the build-up play itself, it is quite important that you have him on target man as he looks to, to hold at the ball and, and get players in and around him and, and they play off him. Finally, defensive support is on stay forward. Right then, how does this change depending on if Joel Linton is replaced with uh, Bruno Guimaraes? Well, let me show you. If I go onto the attacking formation here, you'll see it's now a 4-2-3-1. Now, the tactics generally uh, stay the same. I've not really messed with them. Um, but as you can see, this time, Shelby and Guimaraes are both defensive midfielders, whereas Joe Willock is now the attacking midfielder. And he really thrives in this situation as well um, because it gets him in and around Chris Wood even more so than when someone like Joel Linton is already there performing that role. What this gives you and why they have more likely to play this sometimes is one, it allows them to retain possession more to a great effect because you've basically got two pivots, a double pivot in central midfield now with Shelby and Guimaraes. 
Also, what it does is it just helps to give more protection for the back four compared to if Willock and Joel Linton were there as boxer box midfielders. If both of them get in the box and then the opposition counter attack on them, there's slightly less protection when the opposition look to hit you on their attacking transition. Now, in terms of his instructions, if we go down here, we've got him on cut passing lanes similar to John Joe Shelby, but this time the attack and support is unbalanced because whilst he will play as that deep lying playmaker, he will occasionally look to go forward a bit more and support attacks, but not enough to justify something like get forward where we don't want him constantly running in behind the strikers. His positioning freedom is also on free roam as well, again, helping to get a bit more rotation, lots of movement, always showing for the ball, and again, really helps you to recycle possession to a, an effective degree. What we also have with Joe Willock is we have him on comeback on defence and get into the box for the cross as well. Obviously, he has now changed to a camp from a central midfielder, so as a result, that does kind of alternate the instructions that are available to him. So just something also worth bearing in mind. Mind. And with all that being said, that would bring us to the end of this video. If you've got any questions about the tactic, make sure to let me know in the comment section down below and I will do my best to get back to you. If you have any requests for tactics make sure to keep getting at me but if you want your say on which ones i do next then you must get at me on my patreon you give me a follow on there give, support me on there whatever it may be then you can take part in all the votes and um, you know it's a great way to have your say on the uh, future of the content on the channel as well as a whole host of other perks as well that i'm sure you will really enjoy so check that out the link is down below Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Ring the bell so you get notifications every time I upload. A couple of series I'm potentially looking at starting out soon, so we will see how that one goes. Um, and also drop a like if you've enjoyed it and want to see more. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter. The link is also in the description. And on that note, we're going to round it off there. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, I will see you soon.
Substitution for Southampton. Coming off the pitch, number 24, Mohamed Elianusi. Coming onto the pitch, number 11, Nathan Redmond. Substitution for Southampton. Coming off the pitch, number 17, Stuart Armstrong. To be replaced by number 19, Rusev Chanapo.